Now, Sarah must have been doing her press runs in early 2018 because she went on Watch What Happens Live where she was asked about how she felt about Kim Cattrall telling Pierce Morgan that they were never friends. Sarah, of course, went on to say that she was heartbroken and, um, you know, maintained that she's always liked Kim, even though Kim clearly doesn't like anyone here. What was your reaction to Kim Cattrall telling Pierce Morgan that you were never friends, just colleagues? Uh, heartbroken. I mean, that whole week, you and I spoke yeah. about it endlessly, because I was just, I don't know, I was really, I don't know, I found it very upsetting, because that's... You guys can tell by the body language as Sarah is answering this that it is an uncomfortable topic for her to discuss. You know, that's not the way I recall our experience. So, right. it's sad. What ties us together is this singular experience. It was a professional experience, but it, came, it became personal because it was years and years of our lives. Now, unfortunately, Kim Cattrall has gone through some sad life experiences. Like her 55-year-old brother was found dead in Canada in 2018. Sarah, of course, wrote condolences on Kim's Instagram, writing, Dearest Kim, my love and condolences to you and yours and Godspeed, your beloved brother. When asked about her decision to comment, Sarah said, if somebody in your life, whether you're in touch with them or not, is suffering for any reason, it's involuntary that you want to convey condolences or sadness or just let them know that you're thinking about them. And supposedly Sarah had texted and called Kim privately. We don't know if they talked, but she tried. But Kim Cattrall did not appreciate this little press moment that Sarah took, saying that her co-star, Sarah Jessica Parker, is exploiting her brother's death. In her caption, she wrote, my mom asked me today, when will that Sarah Jessica Parker, that hypocrite, leave you alone? Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Let me make this very clear. If I haven't already, you are not my family you are not my friend. So I'm writing to tell you one last time, stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. Woo, Kim served it to Sarah, jeez. At some point, Kim Cattrall truly had enough because this post like broke the internet when she posted a literal graphic that says, I don't need your love or support at this tragic time at Sarah Jessica Parker and the caption saying, my mom asked me today, when will that Sarah Jessica Parker, that hypocrite leave you alone? Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Like, just read this caption. It is scathing. And up until this point, I really don't think people understood how bad and fractured the relationship was. I think that was really the straw that broke the camel's back in this relationship. And Kim had had enough of it, which is what led her to post this. After this incident happened, the media was in a firestorm. US Weekly reported that a source close to Sarah said she's not sure why Kim had to take it to this level. Another source told Us Weekly that the two hated each other and were at odds since the beginning of the second season. A friend of Kim's told Us Weekly their co-stars can't understand why Kim lashed out. It wasn't this bad during filming. While a friend of Sarah said there's no love there, but Sarah Jessica was just being polite. It's sad. And it is sad. Sarah Jessica Parker said she never responded to Kim Kim's conversation with Piers Morgan. We had this experience and it was amazing and nothing will ever be like it. She claims there was no fight. It was completely fabricated because I never actually responded to her and I won't because she needed to say what she needed to say and that's her privilege. A few months later, Sarah Jessica decided to comment on the situation again, probably not making it any better. She said, I'd just like to remind everyone that there is no cat fight. I've never uttered an unkind, unsupportive, unfriendly word and I would love to redefine it. I've always held Kim's work in high regard and always appreciative of her contributions. So really, Sarah might be trying to push this nice girl persona because she's so persistent with trying to dis like dispel these rumors that Kim Cattrall had put out into the world that Sarah is not as kind as she likes to make herself out to be. And I'm curious to where the other stars are here to defend Sarah. I've said she sent out some gifts to Kim. They're going to work it out. And you're gonna I'm not gonna be, let, me, let me just say one thing right now. If one more person calls this a cat fight, oh God. I'm, gonna, I'm not in a fight. I've never fought with, with Kim. Um, I don't have to send any gifts to Kim because I've never done anything. You know, I've, you know, she has felt perfectly comfortable to say lots of things. Um, that's the beauty of living in a democracy. Um, but I, I have no apologies and, and don't, don't ex meaning, meaning I'm not, you know, this isn't a cat fight. This is um, someone who chose to talk about something and, and myself who said, you have, you know, I'm enormously remain grateful for, you know, her work and, um, and the role she played on and off camera for all the years we spent together. 
at this point, I'm seeing a little bit of frustration from Sarah saying, you know, at this point, Kim, you're making me out to look like the bad guy and I'm not going to have it. Kim Cattrall expressed in an interview in August 2019 that she went past the finish line playing Samantha Jones because she loved sex and the city. It was blessings in so many ways. After the second movie, I'd had enough. I couldn't understand why they wouldn't just replace me with another actress instead of wasting time bullying. No means no. Now, a year later, Kim Cattrall decided to speak on the situation again, saying, I don't think anybody really knew it would become this big or that it would be at that moment. For women to express themselves in a very honest, forthright way about how they felt about sexuality or how they even interacted with their girlfriends in a real way, it was a big deal. Everyone was talking about this show and none of the actresses anticipated it, you know, dictating their entire career. However, Kim admitted that she was being cast as a character of a certain likeness to Samantha as her career went on and was plagued by the feud with Sarah Jessica Parker. She declined to comment further on their drama, instead offering, quote, everything is on Google, so I encourage you to Google it. Look at anything I've said about it. I feel that way then, and when I look at what's going on right now, I don't have any regrets. Were you threatened with, uh, hey, you know what, we'll just put in another Samantha, you know, if uh, you don't sign up. Were you ever threatened with that? I think they would probably have tried that, but I remember when we were making the movie, Michael Patrick King turned to me and he said, you know, I wasn't going to do this without you. And I said, Michael, you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, Kim Cattrall said what she said. Now in 2021, Sarah Jessica Parker is back with her fellow co-stars and some new cast members. They release, and just like that, the series went on without Kim Cattrall. We've got Cynthia, we've got Kristen, we've got Sarah, and they had a 10-episode series. In February 2021, we learned why Kim will not join the rest of the cast. The new show was focused on telling an honest story about women being in their 50s in New York. Just as in real life, people come into your life and people leave and it seems like they want to make a show about friendship and if one of them is not a friend then they won't be able to convey that through this series so she actually isn't right for the role. Christopher Noth, who was featured on And Just Like That, actually commented on Kim Cattrall saying, I have to tell you, I have no idea why Kim is thinking this or her emotions because I'm very close to Sarah Jessica Parker and her descriptions of her don't even come close. Then when asked if the situation put the cast in an awkward position, he replied, I just don't like to see anyone talking down about Sarah Jessica Parker because she's a target and people can be nasty. I feel very protective of her and I was not happy about that. That's all I'll say about it. Now, of course, everyone was curious to the beginning of this show and whether they will explain away Samantha because she's another character she's not there what had happened like could you give us some details Kristen Davis weighs in on the rumored beef between Kim Cattrall and her and just like that co-star Sarah Jessica Parker saying she wishes she could fix it they are allowed to have their own feelings. Yeah. That's all I want to say. You have to respect people's wishes. I'm not going to waste energy on it. I can't change anybody. And Kristen, she says she understands that fans are upset, adding, I wish I could fix it, but I can't. It's not in my power. Don't blame Kristen. It is not her power. She is not the one who is writing the checks. But with the release of And Just Like That, fans found out that the show managed to explain Samantha's departure from the group. In the first episode of the series, Carrie and Miranda discuss how Samantha moved to London for work after Carrie removed Samantha as her publicist. In the show, Samantha stopped returning calls and texts from all three women. Quote, I always thought the four of us would be friends forever, Carrie said. Turns out forever only lasts so many seasons. In an interview with Variety, Sarah Jessica Parker discussed the season finale in which Carrie and Samantha resolved their differences through text and off camera. The hinted reconciliation had viewers wondering if Kim Cattrall might join for season two and Sarah Jessica Parker said that she would be welcome if she was willing. Sarah said, I don't think she would because I think there's just too much public history of feelings on her part that she has shared. I haven't participated in or read articles, although people are inclined to let me know. So it's true. She hasn't read your work, Kim, or your interviews or watched them, but people have told her. Creator Michael Patrick King added, magically thinking it's great to have Samantha. I have no realistic expectation of Kim Cattrall ever appearing again. Now, Kim Cattrall had finally spoken on the series in 2022. She also spoke to Variety and revealed that she hadn't watched the series and shared why she walked away from the franchise. Quote, it's a great wisdom to know when enough is enough. I also didn't want to compromise what the show was to me. The way forward seemed clear. I certainly heard about the re 
reboot and I've come to the conclusion that the really greatest compliment I could have as an actor is to be missed. But of course, Sarah Jessica is going to do everything in her power to kind of erase that and maintain this show with these three women and their added co-stars. When Kim was asked if she was ever friends with her co-stars or if their relationship was always contentious, she said, I guess it's how you define friends. I think we were colleagues. My colleagues aren't my friends. It was professional. She also wanted to make it very clear that she does not plan to go on to the series, even though these characters may have made up in the new reboot, she's not going to be there. Sarah went on to reveal that she never actually asked Kim to be part of this reboot because she made it clear that she wasn't interested in being a part of Sex in the City at all. So it didn't even occur to them to go and ask her to join. She said, you've got to listen to somebody. And if they're publicly talking about something and it doesn't suggest it's someplace they want to be or a person they want to play or an environment in which they want to be, you get to an age where you're like, well, we hear that. And she is done trying. Sarah also added, it's so painful to hear people refer to the situation as a cat fight because she claims she's never said anything bad about this woman. So stop trying to make her seem like she is a bully. But then everything changes because in 2023, Kim Cattrall changes her mind. Kim joined the cast <laughs> very briefly and without filming with Sarah Jessica Parker. She was going to reprise her role as Samantha in the season two finale of the series. Kim will only be in one scene, the outlet reported, and she shot her dialogue on March 22nd in New York without seeing or speaking with the stars of the series. But it was actually a phone call with Sarah's character and it's kind of awkward to think that they did not film this this together and that they were going to mash it and make it seem like it was all dandy. Hello, London. What's shaking, lady? My flight's three hours delayed, Carrie. I won't be able to make it there in time. In, in time for what? The Last Supper? Miranda and Charlotte told me all about it. I was going to surprise you. Oh my gosh. Well, you did. I'm very surprised. I mean, if there's any way to start rumors up again, that's one way to do it. Also, I'm kind of confused because she's talked so much trash about the series. Why is she back on here? In June 2023, in an interview with Today with Hoda and Jenna, Kim spoke about her upcoming cameo in the series, saying that it's as far as she's going to go with the series. However, she said she'll never fully say goodbye to Samantha. Quote, she's like a lot of characters I've done over the years. I get very emotionally attached and protective of my character. She gave me so much and I'm so appreciative of her. So maybe Kim sees the light in this situation nowadays and maybe she will try to go back on, but I can't imagine her on the series. And honestly, seeing her a part of it just makes me like not want to watch it because I'm like, okay, this woman does not want to be here. She's made it very clear. Is she like here against her will at this point? Though I kind of feel like Sarah Jessica Parker could be a diva. I do think Kim is probably being a little bit like hypersensitive because of like the financial aspects and even there's a part of this story we'd even touch on where Kim really didn't like all of the you know scenes in the show that she was on or in the movie because it made her character seem a certain way which she did not um, appreciate thank you for watching this clip from the let's get into a podcast to view the full episode visit the link listed below